Hi gang, in this video we are going to do another twill plaid, but this time in Photoshop, and then we're going to turn it into flannel. Before we get started, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up, it helps support my channel. Alright, let's get started. I went searching online and found a whole bunch of plaid swatches I thought were really pretty, and I've decided that we're going to go with this one. We are going to start by finding the repeat and dragging out guides. So the first thing you need to do is turn on your rulers, which is Control or Command R, and then we can drag out guides. Now, if you take a good look at this pattern, it starts with a light blue stripe, then there's a gold stripe, a green kind of stripe, and another gold stripe. And then kind of dispersed in between these stripes are some other color, very thin stripes. So we're gonna start by figuring out the repeat just in a vertical way because this is a square and whatever we do vertically, we can also just rotate and use horizontally. So I'm gonna drag out a guide and I've decided that, you know, and I think I wanna start right here at the beginning of this gold stripe. And then I'm going to drag out another guide and the next place we find that stripe, it's the gold following the green, is right here. And so I'm going to put a guide there. And that is the width of our repeat. I'm not going to worry about the height right now because we're going to crop this and I'm going to set my crop to a one by one square. So it's automatically going to give us a square selection. We will go up to view and we want to make sure that we have snap to set to guides, which we do. So let's go ahead and crop this, let it snap right to my guide. We'll grab this side and let it snap right to my guide. And then the height is going to be a square since we set it as a perfect square. We'll click OK. And this is the repeat that we're going to work with. Let's go ahead and select it. We're going to copy it. Let's make sure I'm in the right layer. Yes, we're going to copy it, Control or Command C. We're going to open a new file. It's going to open to the size that we just copied. So click Create and then Paste, Control or Command V. And we are going to work from this. So let's go ahead now and create our stripes. I like to do all the small stripes on one layer and the wider stripes on a different layer and then merge them together when I'm done. So I'm going to make a new layer and we're going to start with the small stripes. We've got it looks like uh, kind of a dark green stripe over here, white, and then these pink ones. And the place we're going to pick our colors from is where the two stripes of the same color intersect. That's how we're going to find our colors. Now, when we go up to the color picker, which is the eyedropper tool here, by default, it is set to one point sample. And one point sample is not necessarily going to give you the right color. We need a nice blend of all the different shades that are mixed in here. So we're going to change our point sample to something larger, like maybe a five by five. Let's go ahead and draw these. I'm going to start with my pink one here. We'll draw one pink stripe. And you'll notice I'm using the rectangle marquee, not the rectangle tool down here on the bottom. I'll use my eyedropper tool, shortcut I, select this pink color, and Alt Backspace or Option Delete will fill it. Go back to your Move tool, which is the letter V on your keyboard. If you hold the Alt or Option key, it will allow you to drag a copy and move it into place. Make sure you hold your Shift key while you do it so it stays in line. We don't want anything coming short of our space because then we won't have a seamless repeat, right? All stripes need to go to the edge of our page. Let's go ahead and do the white ones. The white ones are thinner. If you hold the space bar, you can adjust the placement of your selection. So I'm going to use the eyedropper again to select from a white area and Alt Backspace. And now I'm going to go ahead Grab my Move tool, hold my Alt or Option key, and we're going to drag a second one out. We're going to hold the Alt or Option key. Let's select our two white stripes. And we're going to hold the Alt or Option key down again. Whoop, helps if you're in the Move tool. Hold down the Alt or Option key. And we are going to, again, drag 
and move this into place right over here. And lastly, we have these dark green stripes. So we are gonna draw those. I for the eyedropper tool, we're gonna click this color and Alt Backspace or Option Delete to fill it. Back to the Move tool, hold the Alt or Option key and the Shift key and we're gonna drag one into place here. And that takes care of all of our vertical thin stripes. We're gonna make a new layer underneath the layer that we just did and we can go ahead and do our bigger stripes. So first we have a mustard stripe that goes here and I drop the color and then Alt Backspace or Option Delete to fill. And there's two of those. So we can hold our Alt key, drag a copy into this other place over here. The next stripe is a blue stripe that fills this whole area. So we can grab our rectangle tool and go ahead and draw our stripe. Grab the eyedropper tool, select the color and Alt Backspace or Option Delete to fill. And finally, we have our green stripe so again, we'll go ahead and draw the stripe. We will eye drop the green and Alt Backspace or Option Delete to fill. And that's it. Those are the stripes we need for this particular pattern. Now that we have all our stripes, we're gonna merge our two layers together. So we'll click on the upper stripe layer and Control or Command E to merge it down so that we have them all in one layer. Now we can duplicate the layer and we're gonna rotate it, Control or Command T, right click, rotate 90 degrees. And now we have vertical stripes and horizontal stripes. So before we can do any weaving, we need to create our weave pattern. So we're gonna open a new file. File New, and this file is gonna be very, very small. We're gonna change it from pixels to inches, and we're gonna make a file that is one inch by one inch, by 100 pixels, and we wanna make sure that the background content is transparent. That's very important for this to work. Click Create. We can zoom in, and we're gonna add a few guidelines. We're gonna go up to View, Guides, New Guide Layout. And when this opens, we are going to make a few changes. Right now, it gives us eight columns and a gutter of 20 pixels. We're gonna delete that gutter size. And now you can see there are our eight columns, except we don't want eight, we only need four. So we're gonna change that to four. Then we're gonna turn on rows and we're gonna change the number to four and we're gonna get rid of the gutter also. So we can just delete that so there's no gutter size. And this is what we're looking for. It's a grid of four by four, click okay. We also wanna make sure, view, snap to, guides is on. All right, so now this is going to work very nicely. Grab your rectangle marquee, and we're gonna draw a square that snaps to the guides in that first corner. We're going to hit D to restore our default colors, and we're gonna fill this with our default color, black. So Alt Backspace or Option Delete. And now we are gonna just copy this and move it around here to create a twill pattern. You're gonna hold your Alt key again, or Option key, and we're gonna drag one right next to the first. And then we're gonna do another one and we're gonna drag it straight down. So we're doing a pattern where we go over one and then down, and then over and then down and we need to do over again, but we're out of space. So over this time is gonna go all the way over here to this corner. And this is a twill pattern and it's a seamless repeat. We're gonna deselect this last square here, Control or Command D, select the whole thing. And now we can go up to edit, define pattern. And this is a twill weave. Click okay. Now we can go back to our stripes. We're gonna turn off the top stripe layer, click on the layer below, go to the cookie at the bottom of the layers panel, select pattern, and find the twill pattern we just made, which is right here. It's much too big, that's okay. We can select the scale here, use our arrow key on the keyboard to scale it down, 
until the proportion looks correct. And you can guess, but you don't have to worry too much about it because we can adjust it later. This is absolutely adjustable, which is one of the things that makes it so cool. I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna turn the stripe back on for the top layer, and now we're gonna make a clipping mask. We're gonna clip the stripe into the pattern, which is why it was important that the pattern had a transparent background. Hold your Alt or Option key, move the cursor between these two layers, the stripe layer and the pattern layer, and when this little icon with the arrow and the square pops up, you're gonna click your mouse, and now you've got a woven plaid with a twill weave but the weave is much too big. So we'll just double click on our pattern again and we can scale this down further. Four actually looks pretty good, but let's see if we go a little smaller. Nope, I think four looked best. We'll click okay and we now have our plaid. Let's go up to edit, to find pattern, and now we'll open a new page and we'll fill it with our plaid. File, new, I'll just open, um, we'll go to print and I'll open a letter size page. Click create. And now we're gonna go to the cookie at the bottom of the layers panel, click on pattern, and we will drop down and fill with the pattern we just created. The cool thing about filling in this window is that we can scale. So let's go ahead and make our pattern a little bit bigger. And there is our plaid. Now, if you take a close look, it's a beautiful plaid with a twill weave, but it's very flat. It looks like cotton, and I want this to be flannel, so we're going to change it to flannel. In order to do that, we need to go to our Layers panel, right-click on the layer, and we're going to convert to Smart Object. Now that we've done that, we can add a filter to it without damaging this plaid. Filter, Noise, Add Noise. Now it's really important that you select monochromatic. If you don't, you add a whole bunch of additional little colors and it's gonna affect the look of the plaid pattern. So monochromatic, you're welcome to choose either Gaussian or uniform, whichever you like best, and then you're gonna adjust the amount of noise. So here's with it off, we have definitely a very flat looking repeat, but if we start to slide the noise on, we end up with something that could be a wool or a flannel, has a lot more depth, a lot more interest, and it's a lot more realistic looking. I hope you learned something new in this video. If so, please give this video a like. If there's anything you'd like to see me do in the future, please add it to the comments and I will do my best to oblige. See you in the next video.